you must have felt in certain area of your life that from the past 8 months there has been lot of stuff going on and you wanted success in certain areas of your life and you got success there to to a certain extent at least and now from the last 10 days you might have been wondering that what's next that's happening with many people and now finally from 10th you will start seeing the results the external manifestations will start so what do i mean when i say external manifestations so venus the planet of marriage love romance and beauty is now entering the sign of aries in fact when i'm making this video it has already entered and it's in a gandanta position now at least one for one or two days it had been in gandanta and now again it's in gandanta all right so we will discuss what this transit is going to bring for all of us and as i always say this is a generic video for transit it will not apply 100% to anybody it will not apply more than 30 to 40% because it will depend on which dasha you are running which mahadasha which antar dasha which pratyantar dasha you are running what what is the position of planets in your existing birth chart which planets are in the sign of aries and where is mars and venus placed in your original birth chart and that will depend on every that that's going to be different for all the 7 billion people All right so if you want a bit of help uh, regarding this transit from me for your personal horoscope then you could go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website and you can book a reading from me or if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so now this is a gandanta zone now there is a lot of fear mongering for gandanta at the same time there is lack of clarity for gandanta if you watch videos in youtube or you read articles somewhere which means there are three gandanta zones but people think they are all the same which is the first gandanta zone first gandanta zone is the one which is between pisces and aries because that's the last degree of water sign and the first degree of a fire sign then the second is in cancer and leo and the last one is in scorpio and sagittarius but there are differences between the gandantas zone gandanta zones these three so we will discuss about the cancer leo gandanta some other time when some prominent transit is happening there but as of now let us discuss on the difference between the scorpio sagittarius gandanta and the Pisces Aries Gandanta because Venus although it will be in Aries but for one two days it will be in Gandanta so it's very essential to know what's the difference between these two Gandantas all right because Jupiter was just recently in Gandanta again and now after eighth May it has gone out of Gandanta it has gone retrograde to twenty eight degrees of Scorpio so. what does the scorpio sagittarius gandanta mean the gandanta of scorpio and sagittarius is an inner transformation so yes what's gandanta basically gandanta means untying of knots as they say ganda anta that's the word and ganda has many meanings you know there's uh, one word you know ganda mool then there are so, so many meanings of this word so ganda means something which in a layman's terms you are not able to make sense out of something that's ganda and anta means your ability of not <laughs> able to make sense of it is ending which means now finally you are able to make sense of it which essentially means gandanta is a very good thing i do not understand why people are creating fear about gandanta well 
that's the way things are in this astrological world that everything is fearful you know this transit is bad that transit is bad anyways so essentially gandanta is a good thing now good does not mean that you will become a millionaire or you will find your soulmate it's not good or bad in that terms good and bad in that sense it is good that either positive things are happening in your life or negative things are happening at least now it's revealing itself imagine you are staying with somebody in a relationship which you are not sure if you should take it to marriage or not and then when your uh, this gandanta is active then either you get married or you have a breakup which is very good because now you are at least on one of the sides of the shore either you are in the sea or in the shore you are not some hanging hanging or dangling somewhere in between which is miserable so things come into conclusion now in water signs what happens something ends and in fire sign there is creation but in the scorpio sagittarius gandanta what happens is there is a there is an inner transformation it's not an external fact it's not a external manifestation because scorpio is the sign of transformation scorpio is basically what it's the eighth house it's the graveyard and without understanding this you cannot understand the current transit that's why i'm explaining about this so scorpio is the graveyard what happens when you go to the graveyard or the smashan you feel like crying right i mean not if you just hover around there but suppose some near and dear one has left and then you feel very bad when you go there you remember that that person was there with me once upon a time now that person is not there so scorpio represents the pain which comes from separation because the nakshatra anuradha is in scorpio all the pain suffering and pangs of separation as they say comes from this zodiac sign where this nakshatra is placed of course now we have to understand what sagittarius is sagittarius is enlightenment it's the ninth house so it's the second from scorpio which means now you have when you come to sagittarius you understand what lord krishna says in the gita that's why sagittarius is enlightenment it's divinity krishna says that this material world is a place of misery dukhalaya mashashvatam that's what scorpio is because one day everything else is taken away from us right so scorpio gives you a trailer of death and when a planet transits the scorpio sagittarius gandanta you get massive inner realizations regarding this it's the best time to read gita or shrimad bhagavatam that time because you are going from transformation to enlightenment all right now venus is not in that gandanta venus is in the pisces and aries gandanta now what is this gandanta about this gandanta is very interesting because this is the cycle uh, this is the gandanta where the entire cycle ends a uh, planet's cycle starts from aries and ends at uh, pisces so now what is happening your entire domain domain means the planets the houses which are ruled by venus so venus rules Tau taurus and libra 2 and 7 so wherever taurus and libra is those those houses you will you see from last september what is happening september last year 2018 venus had entered the sign of libra with it, which is its mul trikon sign and when venus was in libra it was there for four months september october november december and you saw that many things in your life you tried to strike a balance you try to walk on two paths regarding the houses which venus rules and at the same time there were some disappointments and there were some achievements also and later on it crossed the scorpio sagittarius gandanta then it came in conjunction with ketu there you see so uh, it's not something very ordinary there are massive transformations in the area of venus which has been happening from a long time which uh, you might not have realized but uh, this is going out <laughs> so now what happens is 
it is in the gandanta of pisces and aries so that means now the entire cycle whatever you had been planning is going for a fix now which means now new things are going to begin so just check the houses which venus rules in your chart you will see that from from the end of june or sorry from the beginning of june when venus crosses aries and enters taurus on fourth it's entering taurus so you will see that after it enters taurus your houses which is ruled by venus they have taken a new form and new shape because aries is the body scorpio and sagittarius is about inner transformation and aries is about getting a new body body is what it's this as they say na deha sthula sthulya sharir yes sukshma sharir they say like this the gross body subtle body so it's like getting a gross body so it means now the manifestation is physical it is tangibly visible in the reality it's not an inner transformation like scorpio and sagittarius all right so now is the time that you will see and especially for people whose ascendant is in taurus or in libra prominent things will happen before june 3rd all right and after june 4th you will realize that my life has changed because now venus is the lord of the ascendant so when ascendant lord is entering this gandanta and crossing aries and going to taurus it means your entire life is taking a new shape and form all right and which will obviously be for your good because as i said ganda anta the confusion is ending now what it is and to what extent that will happen what will it be physically good for you financially or for your marriage and for other aspects of your life that will depend on your individual horoscope as i said all right and always study the transits in line with dashas dashas are the most important deciding powers of your horoscope and if the dasha is indicating something that will happen irrespective of transits or uh, anything else all right the transits will give you the results in the line of the dasha okay so for example if venus is your seventh lord and your dasha is indicating marriage which means you are you are running the dasha of the second house seventh house or the 11th house all right and your marriage is fixed so it could happen that now you finally sign the contract or you get married in this month or something like that but if your dasha is not permitting marriage then this seventh lord venus when it enters gandanta will have a different feeling it could happen that now you are looking for proposals or it could happen that i don't know anything could happen <laughs> all right so it will it will depend on what the dasha is telling and then you have to know how to channelize the transit properly just saying that venus is my 10th lord or my 7th lord will have changes in career or marriage no it's not like that you have to know what the dasha is telling then this transit will speak in that tone all right anyways that that will be a very long video i mean we cannot discuss on all combinations you know all right so that is it i will say about this transit so especially for taurus ascendants and libra ascendants this transit is very important because the new cycle is beginning and yes it is in gandanta now and maybe by the time you watch this video it will be out of gandanta zone all right so utilize this time properly start new projects and you can do new spiritual practices during this time it's an amazing time all right so wish you all the best and yes if you want some help with your chart regarding this you can always go down to the description section to my website okay and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know or if you know somebody who has ascendant or moon in taurus or libra all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and hopefully you find him okay bye bye